Ever noticed how dating feels like being a toddler at a chess match? Interesting, but utterly baffling. You're fascinated by the intricacies, the strategies, the back and forth, but let's be honest, you're just as likely to choke on a pawn as you are to make a winning move. Dating, like chess, is a game of strategy, of careful thought and calculated moves, but unlike chess there's no rulebook, no guide to tell you when to advance your knight or where to move your queen. It's a game of intuition, of feeling your way through the dark. It's like trying to navigate a maze blindfolded, with someone constantly moving the walls. Take the first date for example. It's like the opening moves of a chess game. You're trying to establish control of the center, to set the tone for the rest of the match. But how? Do you go for the bold, aggressive opening or do you play it more defensively? And what about the end game? When do you go in for the checkmate? Is it after the third date or the fifth? Or is it when you finally manage to capture their queen? Then, there's the issue of communication. In chess, your moves speak for you. But in dating, one wrong word can send your opponent into retreat. It's like trying to communicate in a foreign language, where a misplaced comma can change let's eat grandma, to let's eat grandma. And let's not even get started on the issue of who's supposed to make the first move. In chess, the rules are clear on first move, but dating not so clear. So yes, dating is a lot like chess. A game of strategy, of careful moves and calculated risks, but it's also a game of confusion, of missteps and blunders. It's a game where even the best players can find themselves backed into a corner, with no way out, but a desperate gambit. So maybe the dating game isn't exactly like chess. It's more like trying to play chess while someone keeps swapping the board for checkers, now that's a real mind game. The starting line, or should we say, the elusive unicorn of the dating world? Ah, the starting line, that magical place where a man first realizes he's in a romantic relationship. It's a place shrouded in mystery, often hidden behind a fog of mixed signals and misinterpretations. Imagine this. A man, let's call him Bob, thinking he's about to cross the starting line, goes in for a kiss only to be met with a cheek, or consider another man, we'll call him Joe, who spends an entire evening pouring out his heart to a woman, only to find out she's been seeing someone else for weeks. The very same Joe who thought he was on a starting block, only to realize he's been on the spectator bench the whole time. And then there's poor Steve who finally musters the courage to ask his crush out on a date, only to have her respond with, sure, let's hang out. I'll call Mike and Sarah too. Ouch, Steve, that's not a starting line, that's a friend zone detour. Let's not forget about the legendary tale of John, who after months of casual dating decides it's time to make it official. He prepares a romantic dinner, a beautiful speech, and just as he's about to pop the question, will you be my girlfriend? She beats him to it with, you're such a good friend, talk about a false start. And then there's the classic case of misreading signals. Like when a woman casually touches a man's arm during a conversation and he thinks, this is it, the starting line. Only to find out later that the touching was due to a speck of dust on his sleeve. You see, the starting line in the dating world is not as clearly marked as it is in a sprint or a marathon, it's more like trying to find the beginning of a circle or the edge of the horizon. It's elusive, it's confusing, and it's often not where you think it is. And just when you think you've found the starting line, you realize it's actually the finish line, or worse, it's the line for the concession stand. The finish line, that mystical place where you finally figured out what's going on, or have you. Ah, the elusive finish line. That point where you think you finally cracked the code, deciphered the riddles, and solved the mysteries of the dating game. You've gone from casual coffee dates to Netflix and chilling and you're pretty sure you're exclusive, but are you really? Let's imagine the dating world as a marathon. You've been running, sprinting, sometimes crawling, but you finally reached the finish line, panting and out of breath. You're expecting a medal, a trophy, or at least a pat on the back. Instead, you get a perplexed look and a so, what are we? That's right, folks. Welcome to the finish line, or as I like to call it, the twilight zone of dating. It's the place where dating and relationship become synonyms in your dictionary, but you're not quite sure if they've made the same linguistic leap in your partner's vocabulary. This is where the fun really begins. You thought the race was over, didn't you? But no, my friend, the finish line is just a mirage. It's like reaching the end of a rainbow only to find a note saying, the gold's moved to another rainbow, better luck next time. The confusion between dating being exclusive and being in a relationship is like trying to find your way out of a corn maze blindfolded. You think you're heading in the right direction, only to find out you've been walking in circles the whole time. And let's not forget the fear of commitment. It's like the boogeyman of the dating world. 
It lurks around every corner, ready to jump out and scare the living daylights out of you, but don't worry, it's not as terrifying as it seems. It's just another part of the race. And when you finally cross the finish line, you realize it was just the starting line for the next race. Welcome to the relationship relay. Now where did we put that track again? Imagine the dating world as a track and field event. Now don't get too excited. We're not talking about a neat straight 100 meter dash with clearly marked lanes. No, no, no. We're looking at an obstacle course with hurdles, water pits, and maybe even a few landmines. And the worst part, there's no map. Picture yourself as an athlete ready to sprint, but you're not quite sure where the finish line is. Heck, you're not even sure which direction to run in. You've got your running shoes on, you're pumped up, but you're just standing there looking around like a lost puppy. That's what dating feels like for most men. Dating is like trying to run a marathon blindfolded. You might stumble upon the right path, or you might trip over a root and face plant into a mud pit. You might even accidentally wander off the track and find yourself in the middle of a lion's den, also known as the friend zone. Oh, and let's not forget the distractions. They're like those pesky seagulls at the beach, swooping in just when you're about to enjoy your sandwich. They come in the form of ex-partners, misunderstandings, and sometimes, your own insecurities. One moment you think you're on track, the next you're wondering how you ended up in a three-hour argument about whether or not pineapple belongs on pizza. And then there are the other runners. Some are sprinting past you, some are jogging, and some are just standing there blocking your path wondering why they signed up for this race in the first place. It's like everyone got a head start, and you're just trying to figure out where the starting line is, so the track is more like a labyrinth, and you're the poor minotaur trying to find your way out. Good luck with that. All this talk of chess and races, wouldn't it be easier if dating were just a simple game of checkers? Ah, checkers, a game of kings, or rather, a game of average Joes who'd rather not spend half their lives understanding the ins and outs of a chess game. It's simple, it's straightforward, and you're less likely to lose a queen, unless you're really, really bad at it. Imagine it, a world where dating is as uncomplicated as a game of checkers. You make a move, they make a move. No hidden tactics, no strategies that require a PhD to understand, and definitely no unexpected castling moves that leave you wondering if you're even playing the right game. Just like in checkers where every piece has an equal opportunity to become a king, in this simplified version of dating every date could potentially be the one. No need to worry about hierarchies or power dynamics, it's just you, them, and the dating board. And the best part? In checkers, if you make a wrong move, you lose a piece and then you move on. There's no dwelling on past mistakes, no agonizing over a pawn you lost seven moves ago. If dating were like checkers, we could all just hop over our past mistakes and keep moving forward. But let's not forget the crowning glory of checkers, the double jump. In our checkerboard dating world, this would translate to being able to skip the awkward getting to know you phase and jump straight into the good stuff. No need for three dates before the first kiss rule or waiting for the right moment to hold hands, just a straightforward leap into the heart of the relationship. So there it is folks. Men don't hate the game, they just wish it was checkers instead of 4D chess. Maybe one day, we'll all get to play a game we can actually understand.